Hey, hey. I'm just making sure. Can you guys hear me? Tell me if you can hear me. Anybody? Can you hear me? Oh, good. good. Nancy, thank you for answering my question, Nancy. Hey, Sam. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. So excited to be here. Me too. I'm ready to talk. Oh, talk. <laughs> I just want to talk all day. <laughs> Seriously, I feel like, okay, you know how kids have summer camp? I feel like there should be summer camp for moms. Yes. Where we just get it all out and feel supported. Can we invent this, Sam? Um, I think we should. Let's put our heads together. I think we yes. have a really good sign up for it, actually. Right, everybody? Yes. I feel like the activities could be eating, napping, yes. mm -hmm. then more napping. Yep. And then venting and then eating. And like maybe some self-care, which we'll be talking about today, whatever that looks like. Which yes, is which is and napping and eating for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think Jennifer's joining us. Hey! Hey! How are you? Oh, you're freezing on us, Jennifer. Can you hear us? I couldn't quite get it. Sam, is but she hi. freezing for you too? Or is it just she's me? freezing. Yeah, she's freezing on me. Um, there she is. There she is. Hi. Uh-oh, freezing a little still. But I'm so freezing. So hopefully, people are here. Yeah, us. hopefully it'll get fixed. OK, listen, everybody, I want to um, welcome you to the Sandwich Social Club. I'm known as the Lunch Whisperer. Um, and I am joined by Jennifer. Hi. She is the <laughs> eternal optimist. Jennifer, I need more of you in my life because I call myself a recovering pessimist. So hey, recovering I think is you good, though. <laughs> yes, reco I'm in recovery. And then Sam, who is the queen of mom hacks. I need that in my life, too, actually. <laughs> um, but... Natural Choice is doing these amazing get-togethers for us where we are chatting with you about topics that you have told us are important to you. And so today we're going to talk about self-care. And I know there's a ton of talk about self-care and a lot of people just roll their eyes at that because A, my to-do list is so long, it's not like I have time to add something. Now I'm supposed to also think about bath time or, or whatever self-care means. Yes. Um, and some people just think it's, you know, they're like, I don't even, I don't even know what that is because I am so overwhelmed at what it, what, what is self-care? So let's talk about it. Most importantly, we want to learn from you. So if you have found something that feeds your soul and makes you feel like you're taking care of yourself, please comment, tell us. Sometimes you might be commenting something that you think is like a simple little thing. Somebody else will read it and be like, that's brilliant. I never thought to do that. That will be helpful. So there is no wrong answers here. Um, so ladies, let's start with the whole idea of, you know, is this another thing to just put on my to-do list and I don't have time for? And what I realized, and you're both moms, so you can relate to this, is that moms, parents in general, but especially moms, I think sometimes are so busy taking care of everybody else. Does my family have what they need? Did I do this thing for my kid? How are they feeling? How are they doing? How are my friends? We're checking in with everybody, We're making sure our parents, right? Is everybody okay? And we forget to stop and go, wait a second, am I okay? Do I have what I need? Um, can you guys relate to that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I think we sort of, and obviously this has been talked about for years, but we put ourselves last. And so just defining what self-care is for you. So, um, you know, for example, again, some people think self-care is going away for a weekend with your girlfriends. Well, not all people can afford that, right? right. Or a bubble bath. And for me, I've realized self-care is not comparing and competing, not arguing with people on social media. <laughs> Yeah. saying no right we say especially if you're a people pleaser yeah i'll help yeah. with that event yes i'll mm -hmm. do that saying no and then not feeling bad that you said no right this is so important so tell me um what do you do for self-care ladies um you know i read like what you said really resonates for me i didn't have a lot of boundaries i think prior to the last like year and a half that we had and i think being home 
and spending time with my family, I realized how much I need alone time. I didn't know, like I realized I'm probably an extroverted introvert <laughs> at the mm. heart of it. And I recharge with alone time. So if I'm going, 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 and I'm doing things for my kids, my husband, I have two dogs, and I don't get that recharge that I really burned the candle at both ends. So for me, it could mean whatever alone time is. It could mean a walk, listening to a podcast for a half hour. It could mean honestly like binging a terrible show that no one else in my family watches except me. And that's my time. <laughs> Hello, Lifetime Network. Um, <laughs> And whatever that is, I realize I just, I need that alone time to recharge. It could be 15 minutes. It could be 10 minutes, but I, I need it. And that's what I learned about myself this year. Yeah. I think similar to you, I, the same thing with me. Like I, um, I think I'd been used to being so busy outside of the home or doing different things, everyone going different places. And when we were all together, it made me realize wow, like, okay, I am doing a lot and I'm around people all the time. And although I love these people so much, <laughs> I need to step away now and then and have a little time to myself. I know I read a comment, um, shorty stuff. said they like walking in the morning and listening to their mm -hmm. favorite music or podcast. Yeah. Like that, that is sometimes I'm like, because my husband, he works out every day. Like that's like his non-negotiable he has to do. And I realize I don't do that enough for myself is making these like my priority time so I started to say like okay I'm going for a jog and like I would not jog I would just walk <laughs> around the block and like listen to my music or an audiobook or something but that was my like alone time that was you know peaceful and quiet for me and just so and then I came you know and then it was like oh I'm all sweaty when I get home now I need a shower like you know it yeah. gives me, extends that time a little bit so just you, you know, know it, it doesn't have to be a big production yeah. You know what um, a tip someone told me when I was explaining that I wanted this time, but that it sometimes can get interrupted when you're a mom is to schedule mm -hmm. it as if it's an appointment. So I put yes. it in my calendar and that way, if a call comes up for work or anything at all, the way, like you were saying, your husband like has his non-negotiable, my husband mm -hmm. does as well, but I never protected that time for me. Right. So mm -hmm. now I literally put it in my calendar and it's there, whether it's again, a 10 minute time slot, a half an hour, and I, it, that protects it somehow for me because yeah. it's as if it's an appointment. So I, like I want to say two things that what you said made me think of. One is I feel like parents carry a lot of guilt. I swear, I've said this before. I think it's scientific. Like the baby pops out, and not to be graphic, <laughs> but while that hole is still open, guilt and worry just like pour in. And it, it, I mean, even with adoption, I've heard like something happened. You sign the paperwork and all of a sudden like the guilt just consumes you. Mm -hmm. So I really think it's science. But um, a lot of times moms have a hard time taking that time alone, scheduling like you said, Samantha, and saying, this is as important as a work meeting because this is my health. This is my sanity. And, um, and people think like, well, here's the thing. Mother and martyr is not the same word, right? And also... Loving your children 100%, like 100% does not mean you're going to love motherhood 100%. That's not even possible because there are really, really tough, complicated, exhausting things about motherhood. And that's okay. That doesn't make you a bad mother. That just makes you human that you're going to have a hard time. That also means you're a really good mom because you actually care. You're actually putting effort into this thing, right? And so I always think of it as like taking care of myself. I'm not taking away from my family. I'm actually adding to my family because I'm giving them a healthier, happier me. So 100%. I think of it, you know, every time, every parent watching who deals with guilt issues and, and comment and let us know if that's one of your things. But if you feel that kind of guilt, every time you take time for yourself, reframe it and say to yourself, I am doing my family a favor right now because I'm going to be better for them. I'm doing that. And also, what are we teaching our kids, right? Our kids will learn more from watching how we live than we telling them how to live. So if I'm teaching my kids that I have to just go, 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 go and never take care of me, and then my kid calls me someday and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I have three kids. Mom, what do I do? Am I going to tell them, just keep going, keep going. You can't take a break. You can't take care of you. I want my children to see me take time so that they will take time, so that they will prioritize their sanity. So please, the guilt thing, toss it out. No room for that. You have every right I mean, think of it as doctor's orders. Take care of yourself. Right. Um, go ahead. Were you going to say something? 
We have some single moms asking, how do you do that as a single mom? And I've, I've thought about that. I have a lot of girlfriends who are, are single moms of multiple kids. And, you know, I don't know what that looks like. Um, but maybe it's, like you said, talking to your kids about it. And sort of mm-hmm. everyone takes a break during the day, maybe. And everyone takes their self-care time. Yeah. But it's hard when you have little ones. Yeah. yeah. I was a single mom for my kids were one and a half and three when I got divorced. I'm remarried now. But my kids are one and a half and three. And I was broke, okay? I could not afford babysitters. If you're a single mom and you can afford babysitters, please. I mean, <laughs> seriously, any chance you get, never feel guilty about it. Right. Um, but I was, I was broke and couldn't afford any of that. And honestly, I sunk into a really, really deep depression. And when I look back, I think a part of that was that I did not prioritize myself. Mm-hmm. And yes, I was in survival mode. And it's really hard when you have no help and no money. So I completely get it if there are people watching and they feel that what I will tell you is don't feel guilty putting your kids to bed half an hour early don't feel guilty putting your kids in front of an extra movie trust me and that extra hour of television is not going to harm them long term but you not having any time for yourself could harm you long term yeah. So find those pockets of time. I would literally hide in a closet sometime just to have alone time, okay? And make sure my kids are safe and, and you know, mm-hmm. occupied and everything. But just find those pockets of time. You could invite a friend over. That's what I started doing eventually is inviting a friend over. My kids were playing and busy, but I had another adult to connect with. That is so important, especially stay-at-home moms, single moms, and they're just like... This is all. Your whole world is wiping the butt and taking care of a two-year-old and who needs another sandwich, right? You're going to go insane. So just having a friend that you can vent to, that you can share a fun snack with. I mean, I, my heart goes out to every single mom. I've been there. It is so hard, but don't be like me where you don't prioritize yourself because I, it got ugly for me. And I really believe it would have been better if I made myself a priority even during that time. Um, I read, I actually wrote it down because I didn't want to miss it. A woman named Melanie commented, by the way, thank you for everybody's commenting. And she said that for her, self-care is giving herself more grace. Mm. Oh, I mean, that right there. That is something you can do even if you are a single parent with no money and no help. Yeah. Give yourself grace when you have a bad day, even, you know, when you even make a, a flat out bad decision or make a mistake tell yourself i'm not meant to be a super human i'm not meant to be perfect i am a human i'm a human who is flawed and i deserve grace and i deserve forgiveness the same way we would give it to our loved ones so melanie thank you for writing that because that is free giving yourself grace being kind to yourself is free um mama mary Kay, i read um a few comments above something i related to was so you take your moment of self-care, maybe you leave and you come back and everything's hectic and you feel that guilt. She asked, mm. how do you deal with that if you come back and everything's crazy? Well, life is crazy and life is chaotic. <laughs> and this is what I always think. What's out there, the house, whatever being a mess, that doesn't bother me. That's not as important as this inside here being a mess. I need to take care of this mess. I need to make sure that I don't completely lose my mind. That mess can be picked up. This mess is going to take years and years and years and years of work to pick up. So, you know what? Embrace the mess, especially when your kids are little. Mm. Your house does not have to be perfectly clean. You, you know, it's... There's no rules. Yeah, there are no rules. And if somebody... What is making me think that my house needs to be clean 24-7? Like, what, where is that coming from? Is that true? It's our own. You know, it feels good when yeah. everything picked up but we could set a timer and pick things up like it doesn't have to be like that all day every day yeah and if you feel like someone's going to come to your house and judge you for your mess then you just say welcome if it bothers you the vacuum's <laughs> right over there right. And, and you can sit on your couch and have a snack and let them clean <laughs> i love reading people's like everyone's sharing different forms of self-care and someone was saying they, they sing in the morning for 10 minutes. I'm like, I love that. I haven't sang since I was like a kid or like for happy birthdays. Like it does That's, feel good when you sing. Yes. I love that. I love singing in the car. But yeah. I should sit at home. Uh, my, my, one of my kids was going through a really hard time the last few years and it became really, I was like emotionally exhausted. And what made me happy during that time, again, this is another free thing that you can do. 
I would just close myself in my bathroom and blast like 80s music and I would dance. And I, I always told myself like if I was feeling really, really down or really stressed out, I would say, okay, this is your level of stress. So that means three songs. You are not allowed to stop dancing until three songs are over. And I literally had a playlist in my phone called <laughs> Stress Dance. And that, that was like, if I'm stressed, I know these songs will make me happy. Something happens when you hear happy music, when you're moving your body, all Endorphin. of a sudden you can't just be mopey. Go ahead, Jennifer, sorry. I love it. Oh, sorry, I, th I interrupted you, Jennifer. Did you wanna oh, add something? I was just saying it's the endorphins, right? It's yes, <laughs> yes. So I wanna know, you know, obviously this last year and a half has been I don't, I don't, I've lost words. I don't even know what to call it. But um, I want to know, are there lessons, like specifically from this time that you have learned and that you're like, you know what, I like that. I'm actually going to carry that on when life gets semi normal, whatever that means. Um, yeah, I mean, 100%. One that I actually shared recently was before this last year and a half, um, my family didn't sit down for meals together. We were that go, go, go family. And I grew up in a family like that. We all played sports. So everyone almost like ate their dinner. I ate at four, someone ate at five, someone ate at six. Like my husband would come home late. I would have eaten before my kid. Like we were all over the place. And I think we all know that meals is a big place where if you could do one a day together, that's where conversations happen. That's where you catch up you know, for the day, that's where all that like bonding and memories come from as a family. And we started doing that this year because we were home and we would start to do like dinners outside. We would do picnics in our backyard. We would eat lunch together, which obviously is harder to do now. But something I really want to hold on to are those like dinners together, as many mm -hmm. as we can do during the week, the picnics, which by the way, like using natural choice was amazing. We would make these little like uh, mini tacos or roll up. So I would just like have like the rolled meat and like some cheese and crackers and it takes me two seconds to prepare. You put it outside, pour a glass of wine and like that's our hangout. And it was so much fun. And like me and my husband and the kids would enjoy it. And I am like holding on to that tight. I want I love to that. keep doing that. I love that. And I love that you were talking about just like rolling up some meat. Like people think, oh, I got to make a whole dinner from scratch if we're going to eat together. And I no my gosh keep it simple people yeah. again prioritize your sanity go ahead jennifer what about you no i was gonna say i feel like i learned so much about myself in this last year and about kind of each of my family members individually and just how we're all so different and we all have unique personalities although we come from like the same genes like all my kids are you know same mom same dad but they're just completely different personalities and i think that during, you know, the beginning of the pandemic, we're like, okay, let's, you know, get our food. And, you know, we're at home, I got time to finally learn how to cook. And I just realized, like, I'm going to stop trying to make this resolution that I'm going to become this great chef and this great cook, because that's just not me. <laughs> that's yeah. not my personality. And that's okay. Like, I, I don't like to cook. I don't, I don't enjoy, like, you know, making these big fancy meals. I like, simple recipes and that's fine you know it's fine yes. to have like five ingredients or less three ingredients or less i actually really enjoy finding like can i cut an ingredient out of this can i make this yes. easier? like that's a fun cooking challenge for me and that's you know i don't I've, I've let go of like the guilt i guess surrounding needing cooking to be this mm -hmm. big ordeal and like needing to you know, learn how all these flavors and whatnot works together. I'm like, you know, salt and, <laughs> you know, sandwich meat. It's like just simple, simple meals and simple ingredients like works, works fine. And, and it can be like someone said, family favorites. Yeah. They yeah. Become favorites and that's, and that's okay. So to piggyback on that, I read a comment by Sarah. I think it was, I think her name was actually Princess Sarah. Ooh, Go, you wear yay. that tiara. I, I swear every mom deserves a tiara. Um, Sarah said, but how do you get rid of the guilt? And I think the problem is that we set up this fantasy, right? About what we think our life should look like, the type of mother we think we should be, you know, even what our marriage will, we, we just set up this fantasy and then we can't live up to it and we feel guilty. When you think about it, it was a fantasy. It wasn't reality right. in the first place. Right. So you got to ditch the fantasy 
And I love what you said, Jennifer, about like, I just realized I don't like to cook. Why should you feel guilty about that? Why should you feel guilty that you're not making every meal from scratch? Will your children end up in therapy because you didn't cook <laughs> from scratch? No, they might end up in therapy for other reasons, but they will not. I've never heard of a kid being like, you know, or an adult being like, yeah, I'm here because my mother didn't cook everything from scratch. Yeah. <laughs> that's not gonna happen okay so again and you know we're on the natural choice page so perfect segue but i think what like think about it what is wrong with just serving a nice sandwich like what is wrong with that you're giving them protein especially this is why i love natural choices because it's all natural right we're not adding all the bad stuff in there the preservatives if you're giving them a sandwich for example you're giving them protein Maybe you're putting some cheese in there. There you go, dairy. If you can throw in a vegetable, you're my hero. Spice, Hello? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, in my yeah. Mind, yeah, I like it. It's simple. It's fine. And we're all different. You know, I have other talents. Cooking doesn't yeah. have to be one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, way, totally again, with you on that. <laughs> and again, if you're making, like, a steak from scratch for them, and it's taking you hours because you're going to marinate, you're going to make the special, it's protein, and deli ham yeah. is protein. Stop yeah. feeling guilty. Ditch the fantasy and stop feeling guilty. I mean, people are making these like elaborate pastas from scratch from their kid, which is great and awesome. But yeah. it's not like they're getting more nutrition from that than a sandwich yeah. you put together in yeah. a few seconds. <laughs> and you can make it. Eaters, like, uh, yeah. like imagine spending an hour preparing a meal and like your kid takes a bite and is like, I'm good. Yeah. Oh, oh. that's what happened to me. <laughs> Start my biggest pet peeve. Like you're gonna eat every bite yeah. that I've yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The other day I actually made from scratch because I, I do like cooking, so that's why I do it. But there's a lot of other things I don't do and I don't feel guilty about, okay? <laughs> um, but I made these turkey meatballs from scratch. I even caramelized Ooh. the onions to put in there. I made a really yummy sauce that I was like really impressed with. I mean, Ooh. took me like two hours. And everybody was like, mom, next time can we just have sauce out of a can? It's better. <laughs> and I was like, I am now going to use self care by disappearing out of this kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have a story too from yesterday, actually. So my husband and I sometimes talk about like love languages and his is acts of service. So when I make him a sandwich, when I do something like that, he feels so loved. So he was mm. home yesterday working. And again, I am not a cook. Like everyone who knows me knows like, I'm just, it's not my thing. <laughs> I put together, I literally took out a tortilla wrap. I used natural choice meat and I put some cheese and I threw in a little micro greens and I drizzled some olive oil, wrapped that up, sliced it. You're fancy. It that is very he fancy. Was like, <laughs> like he was so happy all day, honestly. Aww. Like he thanked me four times because like he didn't have time to go and get himself lunch that day. And also it was his love language. I like took the yeah. two minutes it took me to do that. But like always having stuff in the fridge, like natural choice, quick, easy to grab thing. Mm -hmm. um it really like made such a difference i was yeah shocked. again my ability of cooking is like on a scale of one to ten like a two but this was like a big deal for him <laughs> oh i love that i actually so for those of you for those of you that don't totally hate cooking i actually did something the other day and my kids like freaked out loved it so do you guys know what a monte cristo sandwich is no but it okay it's great. basically like a ham sandwich and then you dip it in egg wash Kind of like you would French toast, but you don't add cinnamon or sugar yeah, or anything. Same. And then, yeah. And then you fry it. So I don't know if you guys wow. tried the smoked meats from Natural Choice, but they have like applewood and pecan wood smoked yeah. ham. Yeah. And okay. It's really like, it tastes like I just went to a restaurant and got some good smoked meat. So I was, it was one of those days where it was like seven o'clock. I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't fed my children. By the way, isn't it a little overboard that our kids expect us to feed them every day, like multiple times a day? I mean, that's All a lot, day. right? All day. <laughs> yeah. So, so I was like, oh, whatever. I'll just throw together some sandwiches. And then this thought came to my mind. I was like, oh my gosh, they've never had a Monte Cristo. And that's like, so super easy. Just use the natural choice smoked ham, some cheese, um, bread, like literally the simplest little sandwich. And then dipped it in the egg wash, which is basically just whisked eggs with a little bit of milk. And then... Fry, I didn't deep fry it. I just put a little bit of oil. On a pan, right? They, yes. But it's like just a little oil in a pan. Amazing. They flipped they out because it's, 
Okay. Yes, it has like that yummy bread, right? That has okay. that egg wash. And then they, you know, we cut it open and the cheese and was like, all melty. Ooh. Ugh. That's, I mean, that's easy enough. That's way yeah. easy, like two steps. And by the way, people actually pay a lot of money to order a nice Monte Cristo at a restaurant. So you want to talk about simple but fancy? Yeah. Like, I seriously would have served this to guests. It was like that Amazing. good. But so it's just a sandwich. And the cheese, did you, did you have like tomato or anything? Or it was just like meat, cheese, and then the egg? For them, I just had that. And okay. then they love grape tomatoes more than anything else. So I just yeah. put some grape tomatoes on the side. Okay. For me, I actually did put a slice of tomato. Okay. Um, and I actually, I even put some baby spinach for me, which Ooh. I love when it melts with the, you know, cheese melts with, and okay. the spinach okay. gets all, all yummy. Right there. Okay. Yeah. But you could do anything. You could add all of tapenade. I mean, you really can play with it. You could yeah. add bacon. Uh, Natural Choice has great bacon. Yeah. Again, all, no preservatives added, all that bad stuff. So, um, so again, there's ways to get creative where you're not, and why are you feeling guilty? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so what else? What else, you know, like, are there is, I know that cooking and we've heard this a lot. Cooking can be really stressful for parents. Cooking can make them feel guilty, right? Um, preparing food. Like I said, we have to feed our kids multiple times a day. Yeah. I swear when I'm dead, like at my funeral, my kids will still be asking me what's for dinner. Like it never stops. It will never, it will never end. Um, so is this, food and preparing food play into self-care for you? You know, I, I, one of my hacks is actually simplifying snacks and meals. And it made me think of um, one of the moms that commented where when you leave for a little bit and come back and you're stressed, when I leave for a bit, I'm always worried that my kids are going to starve, even if they're leaving, for, <laughs> even if I'm leaving for like a half hour, because my husband just doesn't make them, he doesn't cut it the way they like it. So you know what I do? My hack always is in the fridge, I have everything prepped. And mm. it's nothing intricate. It's like chopped up some baby carrots. You can have some natural choice meats, like rolled, ready to go just the way your kids like them. Because every kid has their way. Um, and I have plates that have like sections for my kids, kind of like the kind they would have when they were little, because my kids don't like things touching sometimes. Touching. <laughs> so <laughs> I have everything prepped and ready, especially breakfast, lunch. Um, so if I do go out, say I'm going somewhere for a half hour and my husband's here, I could be like, hey, lunch is in half an hour. It's already in the fridge. But it didn't take me long. And that, for some reason, alleviates a lot of guilt and stress for me because I know, again, I know they're not going to starve in a half hour, but I just know they like the things they like it, the, the way they like it, and that I know how they like it. So if someone else is with them, I just make it easy. And I, it's also easy for me when I'm starving and making lunch because I feed them first that it's already prepped. Yeah, I love hungry when I'm making lunch. <laughs> That's really I smart. love having things prepped with it. That is such a great tip because you can just take one day, get it done. It's so much easier. Yeah. I like doing that when my kids, um, like if we're playing outside, we live in Texas and it's always hot. So I like um, making little snack trays for them and just pre rolling, like, you know, an after choice turkey meat and then some fruit that they like and strawberries and it's better if I cut the strawberries first because or else my daughter like eats half and tosses it but um, <laughs> and you know baby carrots and things like that and then just setting it out on our picnic table so they can just run and grab it when they're playing you know come and eat snacks go back and play and then they're not running in and outside of my house and I feel like they're getting a full lunch too because some you know like kids like to snack all day yeah. but they're eating good snacks and if you forgot like you know some bread and stuff too that like fills them up then it's like they're snacking, but they're also kind of eating their lunch while they're out there. So yeah. I, never that meal. I love that. So somebody asked about an um, easy breakfast idea. So I'll tell you one that I've done in the past. If your kids like eggs, this is like my go-to easy. Like if I'm going to have a busy week, I kind of have this ready for the whole week. I make a quiche. I know some people are like, Ooh, what? That sounds quiche. complicated. No. You can buy a refrigerated pie crust. Okay. So you're not even making the crust. And then you put it in a pie dish. And literally, key, all quiche is, is eggs mixed with some cream. Okay, you can find a million recipes online. And then you chop up and put in there whatever you want. I, my kids actually eat spinach as long as I chop it up fine. So I'll chop up some spinach. And I always chop up some ham or turkey. Again, we're not talking, you know, buying a whole big ham. We're talking deli meat, right? So you chop it up and you put it, 
in that mixture, you throw it in the crust, you bake it, it is done. Okay, now you have, if you make a big pie, and you know, my kids don't eat a ton, you can make two pies. You have enough for a whole week. All they have to do is cut it, throw it, my, I have two teenagers, for the little one I can do it for them, throw in the microwave for like 15, 20 seconds. You are giving them so much protein to start their day with the eggs and the ham or cheese you can add in there. If you can sneak in some veggies, even better. If not, nothing to feel guilty about. I don't think I ate vegetables till I was like 12 and I'm doing just fine. So, um, so that's like, an, to me, that's an easy breakfast because it's one day of work, very little work, and it can last your whole week. Do you guys have any breakfast ideas? That's cereal. Great. Great. <laughs> My kids love I, berries, so yeah. we just do like, yeah. That's great. Yeah. But even cereal, like people feel guilty about cereal, <laughs> guilty about cereal. Or I've said before that my kids have eaten chips and salsa for dinner sometime. Listen, Popcorn. would you feel guilty if you made your kid, if you got up at 5 a.m. or whatever and made them a beautiful French toast from scratch for breakfast, you'd be like, I'm doing awesome. Let's be honest. Sugar you're serving them probably does, I mean, the cereal you're serving them probably does not have more sugar than that French toast would have. Yeah. So it's like, we, we tell ourselves that certain things are bad when really, if you compare, again, you would have felt really proud of yourself for that French toast with all that sugar. So um, anything else you guys want to add? Any comments you're seeing? Oh, I like this cereal, oatmeal, eggs, and toast. That sounds like our house. Um, oh, man. Yeah, those, those are real fast. Yeah, cereal, oatmeal, oatmeal with like berries. And so that is another thing my kids do like to eat. Um, yeah, and toast. My kids love toast. Like, oh, yeah. I've got another one. Someone was saying on here earlier that their kids eat differently. My two boys eat so differently. It's like they have such different tastes and diets. <laughs> Sometimes feel like a, you know, line cook where I'm like just preparing different things all the time. Um, and my little one loves these smoothies. And I make them the night before because in the morning oh, it's a smart. lot. So what I'll do is he likes it with like yogurt. We do almond milk. I throw spinach in there. I throw oatmeal in there, frozen berries, and sometimes some protein powder. I'll make it the night before and he'll drink it the next morning. My other one won't, but. But again, like what a simple thing. And yeah. you're giving them great nutrients. You're not stressing last minute because it's planned ahead. I love that. Yeah. I also heard somebody, um, I forget, I think it was one of my followers said that they'll make a smoothie and then they'll freeze it in like one of those popsicle things or whatever. Yeah. And their kids like, think that they're getting dessert for breakfast. Yeah. They don't even call it smoothie. They're like, hey, do you want an ice pop? Do you want to, you know, little, <laughs> sometimes they'll add milk and be like, do you want ice cream for breakfast? <laughs> it's all about tricking our children. There's your parenting time. Trick your children. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, I so, oh, hold on, somebody else, I want to read some comments. Um, half a bagel with fruit and milk or fruit smoothie with spinach are our go-to. I love that. Thank you for saying that. That's the other thing, like, I was honestly scared to add any vegetables to a smoothie for my kid, but if you do it right, and you add just a little, and you have enough of that sweetness from the berries or banana or whatever, they're not going to know. They're not going to know. Um, and you don't need to tell them. You don't, and you don't need to feel guilty about it. Um, oh, avocado toast. Oh my gosh, now I'm getting oh, really that's hungry. that's like my favorite. Love. That's my number <laughs> I love one. Avocado toast. my lunch with tomatoes. Oh, that, that sounds mm. amazing. Okay, a lot of people are actually saying smoothies are their thing. Okay, this was so fun. Um, if anybody else has a really great tip for breakfast, lunch, dinner, if you, maybe you have a recipe um, with deli meat that you love and you want to share or a self-care tip or whatever, please Comment real fast before we log off. But if you enjoyed this, join us next month. Because next month, we're going to be talking about um, how to get kids involved in the kitchen and cooking habits and snacking. And I personally, all three of my kids have been picky about certain things at certain ages. Okay, my youngest is seven now. My oldest is turning 18 in three weeks. So I've, we've gone through various ages and being picky. And I'm telling you, the one thing that's helped with all three of them is getting them involved in the kitchen, getting them involved in cooking. And I know some of your parents are like, uh-uh, nope, that sounds insane. I do not want them near me when I'm, it's going to be a mess. I, I want to give you my tips how to stay sane and still get them involved because I'm telling you, if they cook and prepare it, 
It's not guaranteed, but they are way, way more likely to actually eat it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you everything I learned in the last 18 years. And um, we'll have more moms joining us. And we want to hear from you. And let's talk about snacking. I feel like snacking gets a bad rep. Uh, hello, that's like one of my favorite sports. So we're going to talk about that. Um, anything else you guys want to say before we end this? I'm going to try a Monte Cristo now. I'm going to try because I think I can handle that. I love that. Okay, real fast. I got to read one more tip somebody shared. Um, well, okay. Somebody said I chop up sliced turkey and put it in scrambled eggs. Connie, I love that. Actually, scrambled eggs with chopped up deli meat is awesome. Uh, it was a Connie. I think it was Connie. Please do me a favor. Next time you do that, tried. I forget if it's pecan wood or apple wood smoked turkey from Natural Choice. I'm not even kidding you. It literally has like the best flavor. Throw that in your scrambled eggs. You will be thanking me. And then somebody else said, hold on. It's, the comments are going too fast. Deli meat tip. Hawaiian rolls. Okay, I love Hawaiian rolls. Cheese and delicious meat. Then warm it up in the oven. If you're feeling fancy, add a little butter herb mix on top. That's so true. You can make just a simple, like, you know, open face sandwich with cheese on top, throw it in the oven. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, better than a homemade pizza. And it's, you know, you're using, you're not even using dough. You're using bread that's already made. I love that tip. That's actually, you know what? I might have that for lunch. Okay. Um, Monte Cristo grilled cheese. Is that a thing? It is now, Tina. Yeah. <laughs> it is now. Yes. And with grilled cheese too, there's there's so much room to be creative and to add various ingredients and make it fun. Okay, um, stay tuned to Natural Choice. By the way, you can go to thelunchwhisper.com. There are recipes there, there are tips. I think we'll be adding even more. So thelunchwhisper.com um, and join us next month. Just stay tuned to this page. If you don't follow, just follow. That's probably the easiest way to know when we're gonna go live. Um, but we, are gonna cover more topics that you wanna talk about. So getting kids involved in the kitchen, snacking. Um, and then if there are other things, other topics you want us to cover, comment, let us know. We're gonna, I think Natural Choice is gonna post this on their page too, right? So if you tuned in late, we gave some self-care tips and talked about that at the beginning of this so you can watch it there. Okay, I love you all. Thank you so much. Bye guys. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Sam, you're awesome. Hello. So fun. Bye. Bye.